Hi everyone, Rodrigo here once again for one more Autory class and today I'm gonna show you how to do all customizations related to input data tool in Autory. So let's do it together! So guys, here we have our, my Autorix Designer screen. So first of all, we have just to connect with this in-out settings over here, this section, and then go to Input Data Tool, this one. So drag and drop this tool in your Canva. And then we have just to click this narrow over here. So click once, then go to Files. In our case, I will show you how to connect with Excel and also CSV file, okay guys? So I will show you all configurations about it, about these two source, data sources, okay? So click on File, then select File, then go to your computer, find the file that you want to import in Alteryx. So I will connect with this one, because wtransactions.xlsx here, then open. Then we have just to select which sheet we want to import in our project, okay? In my case, it will be this output because I have only one in my project. So this will be my sheet, then click in OK. Then you will see in the left side, in this area over here, the like an overview of your data data okay so this is an overview if you look at we have some troubles because our data is starting the row four okay the first three rows are related to new values it's like a header of the file okay it's not a data valid so i don't want to import these three lines i want to start my project in line four in the row four how to do that it's easy guys if you you check in this part these options over here just scroll down a little bit and in the 17th uh, option over here, you see this start data import online, and then you just put the number of the row related to the beginning of your data. In my case, the row is the row four, okay, the line four, so I will put four here. And then you just go to the right and click in this button, run. Then see the results over here. The results is show me just the mm, line one and two. I'm, I still have problems. So four is not the through line that I want to start. Maybe it's the six. Let's run again just to check. Six is too much. Okay, I'll be, I will move back to one. Just to check again. So here I have row one to three and then four so start in the line four run again mm, it's still problem so start in the line five let's check okay now it's perfect okay line five because what is the difference between four and five the four let's check again I will just uh, uh, change over here, guys, and then click in this refresh, okay? This is an overview before the real run, okay? Real results over here. So this is the like first view of our data source. So in this case, if you look at the row four is not the real data line. This is the header line, okay? This is the header line of our data source. So we have here just to indicate what is the row of real data. So my data is starting row five, which means that the four will be the header of my data source. That's why we put the number five over here before run, not the number four. Okay, now it's correct. This is the first way to configure your input data tool. Okay, there is another option over here related to the fifth fifth option over here you can just choose if you want to create a new field that show the full path of data source which means this path the path of the file in your computer or you can choose just the file name only or no 
no information. First of all, I will run with the no information. So if I do this one and I check the results, I can move horizontally over here and I will see the, exactly the total of fields that I have in my data source, okay? The same fields, all the same columns, okay? Now I will change here to file name only. Then I will click in run again. Now, if you look at to the end of your data source, you will see this new column. We call it file name with the name of the file. Okay, cost W transactions. Or you can just change here to full path and the data will change a little bit for the full path. The field is still the same name, file name, but now in each row, I have the full path of this file not the only the name okay that's the difference now let's moving back to configuration to do something more okay guys there is one called first row contain data if you put it here this flag as yes if you selected this flag you will see that the head header of your data source will change a little bit so i will click in the bottom run now uh, outer it's just consider it that this line four is a real data not a header okay that's why we have now the headers as f1 f2 f3 f4 etc and here the first line we have the customer id store number uh equal then line two when we have the 10 and line 3 100 a thousand and etc so these now autorix considered as data not only header why autorix did that because we did this option here this uh, flag was selected if you unselected this one and run again now you will see that the row 4 become header right so this is the other configuration. Now we have the other one here, call it record limit, the first option, which means that if you put it here, like, first of all, let's check how many rows we have in our data source. I will just scroll down until the end. I will use this part is better. So I have 2,669 rows in my data source. For example, if I wanna work only with a uh, hundred rows I can go to this record limit just put the number a hundred and then run and then I will see in the results only the first a hundred rows of my data set okay so uh, remember that guys if you just put n number here will be the first n numbers of your data source okay it's not something that you can just create samples with part of your data source if you want to make some samples there is a specific tool to do that call it sample in Alteric. so you have to import all data and then you just connect with this tool sample and then you can just do that like select the first three and then three in the end and then in the middle something so we have to use the sample tool to do this kind of job all right in this case i'm just selecting the first 100 rows in my data source this is another kind of configuration that we can do in input data okay now guys i'm going to show you a different way to input data with this tool with this the same file but now we're gonna import another kind of information instead these all data over here okay to do that first of all i will use another input data tool so i will drag here and drop here i will connect it with the same file okay now select file this is the cost cost the w transaction open but now instead use this part over here select a sheet I will use this option over here, import on the list of sheet names. In this case, if I uh, put OK and then I run this tool, I will see now only the sheet names of my file and the results, okay? Instead, all data. 
So if you change it for a list of sheet names, you will see just the name of the sheets instead all data. And how just to uh, he do that if you want it? You just go to the first option in your input data, click in these points over here, and then change it, for example, for select sheet, just the output, and then run. Now I have all data. If I'm moving back to this first option, table or query, I click in the sign on again and just put it import only the list of sheet names. I will see just the name of the sheets, okay? This is good when we want to import, for example, at the same time, main sheets. So we can do that, Just we can just use this list of sheet names and then we connect a dynamic rename tool in order to import all sheets in the same time in Alteryx, okay? In the future videos, I will show you how to do that, guys. So for today, I want to do that because we are just working in input data. Now I have another hint for you. For example, if I go to my computer, I can see in this uh, field here, in this input data field, I can see that I have two files, one call it cus w transaction and another one cus w transactions hyphen copy. Okay, so I have two files. There is a way to import these two files at the same time, one above another one, okay? One under the other, for example. So this is easy to do and we can do in Alteryx with a simple, simple, really, really simple uh, configuration. I will show you now how to do that. First of, first of all, I will just delete this, the second input tool then I will move to here, the first one. And for example, I know that my two files has the same beginning name, uh, call it cus, underline W transaction, okay? I have the same name in both files. But in the end of the names, I have some difference because I don't have hyphen in this second one. So I will go to the end of my full path click here before the, the dot and then I will put some asterisk. So if I put one here, uh, Alteryx will just see the full path and will consider it. all files uh, dot uh, xlsx with this beginning name as a valid to import. So if I put this asterisk here, I can click in the button run. And now I'm gonna see that Alteryx import all data. In this case, import only 10 because I have a record limit over here. So I have to rephrase the 100 number over here, then run again. And now I can see that I have 5,338 records, okay? Uh, which means that I have records of both files. How to do, to know that? I can go to the fifth option over here and I put file name only, run again, and then check it. Look at here, in the end of my data source, I have some rows related to, some data related to cust w transaction hyphen copy. And in the end, I have data from the other file. So if you use this uh, asterisk here, guys, you will see that Alteryx can import all files with the same structure. Don't forget this dot something here, the same uh, type of file with these beginning names, okay? This is a way to import multiple files at the same time. All right, so now guys, I'm gonna show you how to import CSV to Alteryx. To do that, I'm, go, I'm gonna go to this search port over here. I will put the name input. Then I can see input data over here. I will click in the example. Then Alteryx show me some example how to use this uh, tool. Then I will just run 
before I explain to you. Then I will move down to this comma delimited text file just to show you guys. In this case, there is some a sample of Alteryx that we can use as, a, as an example to our project. And this is a CSV file called state population. Uh, the way to connect is the same. Just click in this narrow over here, file, select file, and then find the CSV file, and then click in open, and you will see that the full path appear over here. And here's there's the same, uh, it's almost the same settings of input data as uh, Excel file, okay? But there is some differences that I want to show you. The first one, when you connect it to a CSV file, it's important to know how the fields are split in the file. For example, in this case, the comma is the delimiter of the field, so I have to put this uh, delimiter over here. For example, if I raise and then just click in run, you will see that I have some troubles. Oh, in this case, I don't have it because that, okay, I will change the delimiters. For example, I will change for uh, asterisk. Let me see if something wrong will, will happen. Look at, now I have all fields in the same, all data's in the same field, as you can see here, for example. And also, if you look at, I it's, clearly a comma that uh, uh, the comma is a delimiter of the fields. If you look at between the fields over here, between the, be, between the header, you will see that comma is, is a delimiter. So I have to just put it this delimiter over here and then run again in order to router it, split my fields in each field, okay? in many fields, okay? Split the only one field in many fields using this delimiter. Also, I can go all scroll down and look to this part, this code page settings. So guys, don't don't forget to check what uh, what code page you have in your CSV. Otherwise, you will have you will have troubles with signs, uh, with points, with um, how to alter it, understand the words. So you have to check the code page before clicking the run button. Okay, when you import CSV, these are the two most important things to check. First one, the delimiters, and then the code page. All right. So guys, these were the ways to import data uh, to Alteryx and how to customize the input data tool in Alteryx. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe in our YouTube channel. Don't forget to give us your like and don't forget to share this content with anyone else that you think will be important to know, okay? That's all for today and see you in the next video. Bye.